Good evening and welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Welcome back, Steve. How are you? What's up, my friend? How are you, man? Miss you. Good, good, good. It's been a while. I've been you on for a couple of shows, and I know you're doing a little bit of circus in the podcast, and, and um, it's a good time because you got a lot going on. You want to promote it? Yeah. And get out there. Yeah, man. I've been busy, but you know what? It's kind of funny because I've my whole life I've always been like that. Right. And, you know, I have the reputation amongst my family and friends and never slowing down and stuff like that. But I think if you slow down, like even at nighttime, you know, like to spend time with the wife, it yeah. doesn't really start till like 11 at night when everything is put up. And then, Quiet. you know, all right, now we can watch TV. Most people are, you know, they've been sound asleep for two hours and I'm just kind of getting revved up. But that's all right. I'm glad I still have all the energy, you know. You do. You look great. You sound great. And I think that's what's really, really incredible is, you know, obviously I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of albums and listen to music. But the last album you just did is so good. You had so many releases. I think bands probably on one of the biggest upswings it's been on. Everyone's finally settled in with a singer. Like before, you, you, there was always like a backlash. You know what I mean? Yeah. You was always like, well, I want, you know, mom and dad. And he's like, mom and dad aren't getting back together. It's like, I want this. I want this. Like, it, and it's not fair for a band. To, you, you did that. I'm not hearing it anymore. You know? he's in everyone loves him yeah yeah it's a tough thing man i mean you know i i've I've come to have you know uh, come to terms with dealing with the fact that and and the the way i do it is i watch and see what happens with with other bands and stuff like that and it doesn't matter at whatever level you are i mean you look at uh look at acdc for example they change singers right um and both are great Mm-hmm. They're both great singers. I mean, what are you going to do with a guy passed? You know, Bon Scott passed away. You, of course, you're going to continue on, but instead of people accepting it and just like, "Hey, look, he's got his part in that history. It's always going to be there. We have to welcome him." And you still have people whining and complaining about this over. It, there's no, there's no need for that. But I realize human nature is going to allow that. You're no matter whatever happens in life you're going to have to deal with certain things. So making singer changes is the biggest thing. Right. So you just deal with it and realize that, you know what, the people that are, are, are truly can appreciate the hard work and the fact that you're moving on and that you're trying to continue uh, the legacy and you, you want to continue to move forward in a positive manner. Those, those are the people that make it, that give you the drive and make it worthwhile for you know so no matter who you are anytime you do anything you're gonna have people commenting on it so you just you talk you you preach the the choir i got got the youtube show everyone's got something to say about it something there's probably 12 things someone's gonna write in about they've done the past minute that's already upsetting (laughs) you know yeah it, it doesn't matter and it's not just in music it's in anything in life if i went online right now let's say i put a recipe on for like you know a chili recipe i'd have five thousand people that wanted to kill me because I didn't yeah. put something that they liked in it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like people are insane. You, you know, and, just pray and, for those people, man, that they have can find some happiness somewhere else and and just move on. Live for the good people. Saying, and that's what I'm saying. But I think it's I'm I'm ha- I'm hearing like it's not that that noise where you're hearing it's just like it's it's just, it's a good album, it's a good song, it's a good singer. Like you're not hearing right. but uh, it's wrong. I mean, but, yeah, there's a certain sound. But guess what? There's a certain sound that David Lee Roth had with Van Halen. But you know what? I yeah. love Sammy Hagar singing with Van Halen. You know, and I like the early Daily Raw stuff. It's it, you can't just you can it. like everything, man. You can like everything. Isn't that the great? I, yeah, I love the early stuff. You know what? I love the new album. And I love the new stuff in the singer. It's okay, and it's, it's all right to like he, it all because the old and, stuff is still there for you. It's still there for you. You know, um, if you and that's what I don't understand because I want my favorite bands to keep putting music out, and yeah. if they have a change in the band, so then go find somebody else that works that. So I, please, I want you to do that. I want you to like, you know, I, I mean, it's like I want to go to some people sometimes and say, OK, you know, you remember when you were married to that other woman 20 years ago? Well, I want you to go back to her now yeah. because it made my life at that time in my yeah. life. I was happy or whatever. So go do that for me. You know, it's like it, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of disrespectful and sad the way some people are. But yeah. if you sit back and go, look, man. You can those things that you enjoyed from way back then, the early albums and stuff like that, they're still there. They're always going to be there for you. Now, why don't you take the ride with us? Because if you open your mind and you really sit down and like it, you're going to like everything. And who wants to 
be limited to what they like. Don't you want to that, just that, continue that's that? the battle though. That's and that uh-huh. is, we, we go on our, our talks. This is actually a good talk. That's the battle. I've had things where I'll post, I'll share a band thing, right? On a on a, a website or a page. A lot of a lot of Facebook groups will share them or whatever. But some of them won't share because it's new stuff. It'll be dedicated to that band. I'm like, this band artist has another interview out, right? And say it was like, oh, so Lily Dax page. There's no such thing out there, people that I know of. But just say it's, I find it right. amazing page. And we have this interview, and I send it over to them. They won't do it, but I'll have 15,000 posts of, of show your love, you know, all throughout the day, like reposted. Right. But they won't do anything new. That I come across, and it makes me crazy. I'm like, yeah. you love this artist. This page is dedicated to him. They're doing a brand new interview talking about something new and creative they're doing. And you're like, nope, I want 30 years ago. And I'm like, <laughs> that's bananas to me. You know, and that's just that that just is to be honest with you. I think that's people that feel like that. It's not about the music at that point. It's about their lives. Right. It's about that is a trigger to when they were happier than they are now or when it was when things were really unique. Hey, look, we all have that. I mean, I can listen to Boston's first album, the New England, there's Scorpions you know um love drive and and these things and they take me right back to those places which is great but i don't want to just go back there all the time i also want to live the rest of my the rest of my life is just as important and i want to be able to be happy now too so hey give me everything you got i want all my favorite bands to make records every week if they could you know i mean it's just that's the enjoyable part about it i I agree and i i I tell you you know that's that's what we're always trying to promote albums and that's why this is a good talk for us today. So, new song out, new video. Let's talk about that right. first. This will be the song's called No Problem, and it's off the, uh, excuse me, I got a, a cold today, so I'm very sniffly, and the throat's a little uh, a little sore, but... I thought um, you had a cool, like, voice, deep voice, kind of like Bane. Really <laughs> no, 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 like a voice. High voice, yeah. My Barry, my Barry yeah. White voice. Yeah. Barry White voice. <laughs> um, my awesome. song's called No Problem. It's from... Um, it's our third video from the last album came out a year and a half ago or so, almost two years now from womb to tomb. And, um, the song, uh, I actually maybe seven, eight years ago, I wrote it in a dream. Um, I had a dream that I was sitting around with Joe Perry from Aerosmith playing acoustic guitar and mandolin. I don't know where it came from. I have no idea. Uh, I started, we were playing this thing and I woke up and I had this, the chord progression and the, the actual melody for the verses in my head. And I, like I do anytime I come up with an idea, I ran to the phone, recorded it, got the acoustic guitar out and recorded it um, right there uh, on the phone. And the lyrics started coming to me right then and there too. Like some of the lyrics were in my dream and some of them just started flowing out that time. So I wrote them all down and that was probably three or four years, maybe more prior to when, we did the record and it just fit perfectly. So I said, you know, I've always wanted to do this. So uh, that's that's where that song came from. It's it's, it's just it's, sim- it's sim- similar to like, you know, the day I met you mm-hmm. um, in that one guitar. I mean, there's three guitars tracked, but it's, you know, it's one main guitar line. Nothing else. In the song. It's layered and you really hear that this is one guitar leaving it. Yeah, exactly. So um and, and that's it. And one vocal. There's no harmonies. There's nothing. It's um, very similar. And it's funny because the other song that we did that was very similar uh, was The Day I Met You. And those simplistic, uh, I would say elementary in its expression, mm-hmm. seem to really touch people a lot. So, you know, um, I have a song. Well, you released it on now. Father's Day. It's a song about yeah. loss. The video, oh my I'm God, my God. heart. <laughs> oh man, I, I, let me tell you something. We've gotten so many. I, I, I was like, I, it's, all right, we were like making a bet. How long is it going to be before somebody said, oh, Lillian Axe went from glam metal to hard rock to metal to prog metal. Now you're country. You know, I'm like, I ah, just give it time. We haven't heard that one yet, though. But everybody has been touched by it. I mean, I, I even like uh, had people calling me and I'm like, uh, they. I knew they had just heard it. And I was like telling people in the room, they're going to be crying hello and they'd be balling on the other line so i mean it, it is a tearjerker because we do uh we show pictures of our families friends and past bandmates uh pictures of them in the video 
that have passed away. And I'm sure if we'd have had the time and the ability, there are probably 50 to 100 more people that we know that we could have put in there. But it was an homage to those who have passed. And when I wrote the song, the idea was it was a lullaby So because I'm a lullaby fanatic. And uh, I, I pictured myself, you know, with my son when he was, you know, at, at any time, but especially when he was a baby and just singing that song to him. And um, that message of I'm here, I'm, I'm with you forever and ever, no matter if we're miles apart, I will always be with you. I will always be thinking about you. And, you know, you can find me forever and we'll be together forever and ever. That message is really strong for me, not just with my son, but with my family, with my friends, et cetera. And so I wanted to, you know, find a way to to really express that feeling. And the best way to do it in this case was very simply, you know, um, just the melody, the words. And it's a short song, you know, and sometimes, you know, sometimes I second guess myself. Like I was like, wow, I get to that point and the song's over. God, I wish I'd have maybe added another verse and another chorus to it. And then I say, you know what? Stop second guessing yourself. It's it's very short song, but it's to the point and it means enough. If you like it enough, you'll go back and listen to the song again. If you like the melody that much. So um, but um, I was uh, Todd Schmidt, who directed our first two videos for I Am Beyond and Feelings of Absent. He did this one as well. And he's just a freaking genius. So he's just such a great job. And um, and the cool thing about Todd is we're such close friends. He knows my brain. He knows how I tick. Uh, he knows my heart. And and, and um, we have very, very uh, similar uh, thoughts on life. So, you know, all the things that he able to capture yeah. um, with his vision and stuff are just like they're spot on. You know, I don't even have to ever really even – Go back and, you know, you know, maybe a couple of little things here and there. We, you know, let him re-edit. But I'm like, we film, we talk about it, and I leave him alone. It's just like when you're when you're mixing an album. Whoever's mixing it, I'll give you my notes. These are my ideas. Go do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna micromanage you. Just go do it. Bring it back to me when you're finished. And he does it, and it's always, you know, 98% perfect when he sends it to me and that's kind of fun too when you shoot something and and you video something for a while and then you don't know what to expect and then after a couple of weeks he calls you all right i'm sending it over here's here's the, the uh you know our first edit and you get to watch yeah. it it's like you know it's like a little kid in a candy store and you get to see it so um but yeah we're really we're really happy with this one i hope it really uh helps a lot of people out by the the response so far, it's been uh, it's been no, quite okay. an emotional no. thing. Yeah, it's so a couple of topics I, I want to say. First off, I love the fact you guys are still working the album because sometimes the budget for certain things, certain labels do like a, a one month, they blast it out and it's gone and it dies. Different labels handle things differently. I love the fact you're actually, this is like you're, you're walking, you're, you know, you're walking what you're saying. You're working the album. You've had three yeah. good videos. They're not bad videos look like they're shot like in an, uh, a flip phone in the cave, you know, kind of hostage situation. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And they're very yep. high quality. These are videos that we would have watched back in the heyday. High-end concept videos, you know, with still performance. It's not too much. So you're working it, you're touring it, and, it, and when you write your lyrics, you have that you have that melody, and that tone that you always had. So there's always a consistency in the band. So as you work it, there's a familiarity. But also, the lyrics you write Leave it, um, leave it open. I think and I could be interpreting it. That's my whole point. Is I think the way you write, you do it in a way, and, and anyone else writes with you, but we hit up what you're writing in the past. You, the lyrics allow other people to interpret it, which is what makes it a real special song. All of our favorite songs we we interpret it to our lives. So if it, so the, not being that specific, people hear the song and they're like, oh my god, that's me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's true. That's because I mean, I say I'm I'm writing it. Um, uh, with you know, with the vision in my mind of me singing a lullaby to my son and my daughter, you know, that's that's one thing. But the message is it's it's about how much oh. you love them and how your your existence is dedicated to them. But that can go from anybody, it can go from mother to son, you know, mm -hmm. father to daughter. It can be any two people, friends, 
you know, uh, people in relationships. It's just, it's about the purity of dedication, loyalty, and love to another individual. So, and, and I, I tend to write a lot of stuff with that type of methodology. Like I'm thinking about a specific person in my life or that I know that these feelings are directed towards, but these are universal. These are human feelings. You know, when I write a song about anger, it doesn't matter if I'm writing because I'm angry at a particular thing or a person or whatever, because everybody feels that anger. So they can take that idea and they can adapt it to whatever they do. When I'm feeling joy about something, everybody, it's basic human emotions that we all feel. So um, it, able to take, you know, people able to take the, the message and adapt it to what they've had to go through in their life. Even on some of the, you know, like some of the songs, I've, we have a song called The Second of May on Waters Rising, and it's about disappearing children. But I have all kinds of imagery in there. Like I even um, refer back to the original Frankenstein movie where he threw the little girl in the water because he thought she could float like the flower. Yeah. And and it's about my concern and fear and and uh hatred of you know the fact that so many kids wind up disappearing it you know and always have and it's not anything that anybody really ever talks about so much you know and so i wrote a song about that called the second of may then all of a sudden i start hearing people talking to me about oh yeah well this you know somebody i was related to disappeared or i heard about this kid disappeared and and it's all the same um the, the same heartfelt feelings that i have about things but everybody has a way to relate it to something in their life and uh and i think that's what's really cool because people talk to me about lyrics all the time and tell me how much lyrics have helped them and changed their life and you know been with them and um in very difficult times and you know even my son who's a, you know just turned a teenager he's like dad you're like really helping a lot of people out aren't you with your music and stuff and and I, I you know it's one of those things i think that uh we take for granted and it's not just me as, as a musician songwriter because everybody i don't care what you're doing in life man you have the ability to help and change somebody else's life by just doing something as simple as opening a door for them you know or smiling at them or telling them hello you don't know what some small act like that can oh, do yeah. to change another person's life. You don't know what they're going through. It could be, you know, you could just be kind to somebody that's really in a bad spot. Next thing you know, you that little bit of a flicker of hope helps somebody to to get through something they're going through. So I kind of, you know, I, I, I've i seen musicians in the past that have said like, well, I don't, you know, I don't owe it to anybody to do this. I'm not, I'm not here to, save people or help you know i'm writing music that's you know that's what i'm doing and that's cool that's not a problem <laughs> but for me individually i kind of have, have felt like and it, it hit me a long time ago when you know first started hearing this many years ago when people would tell me about what the songs meant for them i just thought i was writing cool songs at first you know when i'm in my 20s you know and, and then i'm starting like well man you know this song uh you know a needle in your pain and this song, um, you know, the promised land. See, someday these helped me. I had a guy that had lost his fiance right before they get married. And he was going to take his life. And he said a Bob Dylan song and one of my songs, the see you someday. I think it was saved him from taking his own life. And I'm like, you know, you just don't take that lightly when you, when you hear that you know, no. for the first time. And so for all these years, I've heard that. And it's just really made me feel like it's, it's, you know, it's a blessing to be able to do that. But at the same token, I don't want to let everybody down. You know, I don't want to, I, I want to do things that help people as much as I want to write great music, you know? So it's always in my mind that the messages that I'm writing about, because I don't write necessarily about every, you know, I, some people tease me and say, oh, man, you're so doom and gloom. And then some people say, man, you're so upbeat. You know, it's, it's how you take it. I just write about what it is. There's a silver lining in everything. But I'm not afraid at all to write songs about 
uh, how unhappy I am with the state of mankind. You know, if that makes any sense to you. To me, I say, well, first off, like, one of the things you don't have in your life, which can be hard to realize, like, you don't have a certain point that just totally relatable to you and no one else, because then you're halfway to a song you're listening to as a fan. It's kind of jarring and it pulls you out of the song because it also you're like, oh, it's about somebody else. Like, it takes you out of that. You don't do that. To me, you have like a, um, and I love the word melancholy. I, I love, and I listen to bands, I love that and it has a sound to it. To me, you also do something that, you know, that has that, it was kind of a melancholy, especially your choruses, you have the tone. And I don't think it's gloom and doom, but it's kind of like, sarcastic heavy sadness all mixed together but it's talking about what's going on but there's like underlying melody to it and then usually there's like something that's uplifting at the very end like the sun's the sun's gonna come up but that's huge it's not over there, not hollywood just a regular sunset yeah or something like or sunrise like it's to me it's, it's hopeful but there's also like this melancholy that goes through it you know you know i i can't believe you use the word melancholy because ever since i was a little kid I've always said that and other people have said that about me, like my mom, that yeah. I have a, a melancholy sense about me. And I've always felt like that. Um, and I, I call it congenital sadness. Like it was <laughs> kind of a, a sadness that I was born with, but mm -hmm. not sadness in that um, unhappy sadness. You know, it's more like, a, you know, a sadness over, you know, like afraid to lose things and people. You know, and always just being overly, whether I wanted to be or not, empathetic and sympathetic for other people and watching and just wanting everybody to be good. And when the other people are sad and going through bad times, it hits me really, really hard. And that's like kind of seeped into my musical sensibility. Yeah. So um, and, and like I told you before, I love lullabies. So, right. um, you know, I love the, the melody and, and even in some of our hardest rock and heaviest songs there's a melodic lullaby yeah. thing in in the melody lines of the vocals to them as well so it's kind of like that that just kind of like that melancholy just that little bit of sadness that I'm, i was born with that i feel all the time you know it's like i can go look I'm, i ain't gonna lie to you man i cry in movies you know i can walk outside if i'm at, if i'm like away from my family for two or three hours i feel like i'm a tear up you know i'm just uh you know like uh very very solid emotionally but i just really have such a big um empathy for people i want everybody to be good i want everybody to be happy and when they're not and when things happen and other people aren't happy and they go through hard times it makes me feel like i wish i could do something for everybody you know so the only thing i can really do is just try to be the best example and and help people out with the music and uh and pray for them you know and that's the biggest gift. You, it, uh, you can't let it play down if you're just being you. I mean, that's something you, that you really don't need to worry about. You know, you write a song, you write a song for you the way you've always done it. And you're not going to let anybody down. Because the only person you're going to let right. down is you. Like, trying to write for somebody else. You know, it's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? I mean, you've talked yeah. about, you know, the success of the first and second albums. And then you talk about the bands come in. This is probably talk a while back. It's still coming to my mind. So it's not verbatim. And then we're all supposed to write in the band because they see the royalties, the songwriting, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Album does not sound the same because what happens is you're changing to fit for everybody else. Yeah. That's what this is about. This is about you writing. And if you write with other people, that's fine, but that's what you're doing. You're not doing it for any other outside reason. You're not realizing, I could write a song now to, to touch other people. I'm going to write what comes out of me. And once it's out there, like everything on the internet, in the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's out yeah. there and you can't control it. And if people affects people, and, and that's awesome. That's the biggest gift you can have as a musician to be like, I, wow, really? That made a difference. Yeah, that's all. yeah, you're 100 percent right. So, I, but I, you know, I know there's some guys out there that just, for whatever reason, they they don't want their responsibility because it's heavy duty responsibility. So I wouldn't say it's a responsibility, but I feel like it is. I mean, you know, I I feel like I think the it's whole reason possible for yourself. That's if, if you can be true to yourself, that's your responsibility. Oh yeah, well that's <laughs> why. I, Hey, that's why I don't, you know, I, that's why I don't play rap. You know, I just don't, yeah. I'm not going to, you know, if I did a rap song or something, probably blow up. Right. But I just don't, that's not, that's, I mean, I respect that style of music for what it is, right. but I don't, you that's know, it's like, that's not who I am. I don't like, you know, I, I like rock and roll. I like classical music. I like soundtracks, you know, that's what I, that's what moves me. So I'm not going to go do something that isn't a 100% genuine from, 
my soul and from my heart. So uh, the great part about it is no matter what you do, there are lots of other people in the world that, that there's so many. When we'll I talk about being diverse, there's so many different people and there's lots of people that like everything. So just well, go do your thing, man. I, I do want to say this part to you and Danny Bell's is listening. Great book called Lincoln's Melancholy. Just got to say it to you. It's about Abraham Lincoln and he melancholy his whole life his, with his wife. It, all kinds of sad things happen. Now how he lived and became president and still dealt with melancholy in his life. Really? Yeah. He, I mean, he, he, he had illnesses. Like his wife ended up in an um, institution. She had mental health issues. He had people, kids dying and he's still reigning a presidency with depression and everything called Lincoln. I think it's Lincoln's melancholy or it's along those times. Fantastic book if you're um, a history. Okay. No, that's sure. interesting, man. It's very interesting to take a spin on that vision of a man being so successful and pushing through that in his life to do, you know, there's no rules back then. Anyway, I don't get yeah. to say music, but that's a good, a good book for people. That you know who else I think? I tell you, I always thought this, another person that took his own life that I felt suffered from that too was Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had that underlying sadness and, and melancholy. You could just tell, you know, just in in his acting and, and, and yeah. when he would speak. That was another person I that I could really relate to him. I think that's why I, I liked his his movies so much. But Plus, kindness kindness matters and, and I think I've gotten a couple of the show with a certain artists I've turned away and they've gotten in, you know, well known artists have actually found out something about them, you know. And I don't do right. that. And I've said, I'm sorry, this isn't gonna work out. I wish you best of luck, I said, but the controversy you write the show into what you represent, not what I do. It's not right. Positive. And then they, I've gotten torn up by them, like <laughs> really angry. And then they, they, they play their uh, apologize and stuff. And they say, oh, we get it. It's about positivity. There's not negative out there. And, right. and, and, and that's what this is in your know, music positive. And what's so, I was listening to your, so you actually listen to your two box sets while we're at it. You have two sets that came out. How did that come out when you had just done the, um, the other album? Uh, it's also the greatest hits, so the three CD set. Uh, Psalms for Eternity. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm be honest with you. It was the label. I wasn't thinking about doing a box set, but the label wanted to do it, you know? And so, and it was no easy task because we couldn't get the rights for the first two records. Somebody had already gotten the license and rights for that. So yeah, that was my um, next question about how you got some of the stuff on there. Yeah. And they, and they came to me and said, look, we want to do this box set, but we can't do it in one. You got too much material and we want to put out like, we want the world to know. <laughs> so I went, in the archives man and i mean we pulled out live stuff uh demos that i didn't even remember i had before you know yeah. so i mean it's we and we put my solo record out there we put the circle of light album we wanted to just give everybody everything we possibly That's could awesome i was i can't believe it you know what I'm saying, but nowadays a, a label let's get three yeah. videos and and and, and promote an album a month afterwards and I, a huge box set and, and in, a, in a world where rock yeah. music isn't, you know, blaring on, on MTV. These are, yeah. these are fantastic things that you don't see every day. It's like, you know. <laughs> well, the funny part, Sean, is that we um we just, that label, <laughs> Global Rock, we just signed a new deal. We're with, um, Bra you know, the, the uh, BraveWords.com, the big news. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, they formed a label. We just signed a Brave Words. But it, it's related to the uh, the same members from the past label that just did all these things in the last record. Okay, are part of this new label with Brave Words Records. So we're uh, we and Paul Diano from Iron Maiden were the first two signings. So it, it's cool. It's like they they merge and form this new label with this huge hard rock online web monster uh yep. news monster right and formed a new label so we're even in a bigger better situation than we were before so we're completely happy about that um and they have uh great hopes for us so we start recording the next album and um and the july so and uh you know I, i'm very focused on i have the the title of the album is going to be the 10 commandments and each of the songs 
is going to be it's a very epic album like um you know the next step up from from womb to tomb <laughs> it's, it's 10 tracks and they're they're just monstrous and their <laughs> each song relates yeah. to one of the 10 commandments not in a you know like uh thou shalt not kill this song is about not killing people it's not like that at all it's Rel- it's relative to those lessons because those 10 commandments are the basic life lessons that God gave us to follow down here and everything else that we do that mankind has done does and will do are either following or breaking those commandments and we're in a state right now of humanity that we've never been in I think in the existence of man right now so I just kind of hit me to that I wanted to write the album like that. So it's it's big, man. It's big and it's heavy and it's powerful. Um, and uh, I just I can't wait to start getting these things tracked. That's exciting. It is. I mean, to me, it's it's like so much music for you right now because like you know after you had the new album, it's cool, and then like and then all this other stuff come out. The, both the box sets with the unreleased stuff and the demos. There's so much stuff to absorb. It's fantastic. You know, always want to keep yeah. on giving everybody stuff, man. It's a look, if it was up to me, I would sit in a studio and just pump out two or three records a year if it was financially yeah. infeasible. <laughs> you no, know? But still, I mean, if you think about it, when we talk, <laughs> uh, let's see, the first time we talked was during um, the apocalypse there. And and, yeah. and you were, yeah, boom. And you're like, you're like, you're like you know, if I get this out, this is the last thing I do. This is the epic. This is, this is the breath. The, you know what I mean? We're so, so yeah. focused on it. So exciting. Yeah. And because of the state of the world we're at, the potential, and even prior to that, there was no bands getting as many music at the time. Because I also think there were a lot of good things came out of it, like for artists, artists are appreciating touring. A lot of new music finally came out. I think a lot of things happened positive in, in, in this, uh, this rock world. But um, now, it, you're being so prolific, you're, it's allowed to. Like, it changed so much. You didn't know if that was going to be your last album. Right. You know what I mean? And now you're like, now you not only have other albums out, you work on a new one, you know what I mean? All your old stuff's being put out. I mean, it's like it's bigger. The machine is just getting bigger now. Yeah. You know what would be really nice if the 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 music business machine was like it was, even I say because it's always been kind of nasty because we've been, you know, we've been treated badly by <laughs> you know, MCA treated us horribly. Uh, but they did for a lot of other bands too. So uh, yeah, but, MCA, what's that? Was it MCA for musicians? What's what's the initial musicians stand for? Cemetery of America. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah. let me tell you something. Alice Cooper was on MCA, and when we we toured together, and he told me he got treated badly by them too as well. I'm like, yeah. well, you know, I don't feel quite as bad if Alice Cooper is going to be treated badly like that too. So he, um, um, uh, you know, but my point was that we, you know, uh the mc even back in those days you still had mtv you still had radio stations that were playing that this type of music and stuff it as as crazy as a lot of it was it's way worse now the music businesses and and the way there's no support for new rock and roll and anything anymore it's just a whole different uh it's a whole different mechanism out there right now it's really really difficult why do you think bands don't put any mute why don't we get a new aerosmith album why don't we get a new you know the, all the great bands they, nobody's putting out music anymore they had to go out and tour to make money you know because they won't get supported you know it's uh it, it's really sad uh I, I don't even know how it could be fixed i still don't understand why nobody has come up with another mtv type format because think about it, when there were videos everywhere, right? The music business was thriving. Videos were driving sales. I think yeah, there has been, though. And, 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 and I think and I, uh, I was talking to him. I think Ricky Rackman was going to do something. He has some, an idea. I don't know. He, he was working on it because he was, you know, had big as well. And he had an idea that he wanted to put out there. I don't know exactly what it was. And there's a lot of shows that put these things out, but don't. I think what happens is we're going to put it on a platform, on Netflix, on Hulu, on this and that. Right, right. TV has been eaten. Anything that can be consumed with your ears, your eyes, your heart, whatever, is so, there's so much out there right now. It has it has to balloon, I think, and like everything else is going to regulate itself. I think there's going to be a point where things go, 
You know what I mean? Right. Just like rock mm-hmm. band, boom, boom, grunge, boom, boom. This pop, you know, the pop punk stuff, boom, boom. It all files out and it was at the end. You know what I mean? The strong bands from the 70s, the strong bands from the 80s, the strong from the 90s. You know what I'm saying? It's still going to be the Bee Gees. It's still going to be Aerosmith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Each generation will go on. You know, it's going to be these bands, you know, Lily Axe and all these acts are still out there right now doing it. That's how you this yeah. to survive. But finding the one focused platform, I think the key is going to be finding is the artist supporting it too. Yeah. These artists have one. It's every rock artist, you know, there's going to be a hundred different bands. There's a yeah. chord, like a circle, boats, everyone hits it. If everyone center focuses and says, this is the spot. Yeah. And that is where everybody goes to, that will build. Yeah. And I, look, I'm going to tell you straight up too. A lot of it does have to do with the fans. I mean, oh. you know, all you know, the fans things. have to support the bands. You know, um, they don't go out to shows as much anymore. And I realize that the economy is really tough. People don't have the money. And some of these shows out there are ridiculously overpriced. I mean, to go to a concert, pay 200 bucks for a regular concert ticket. Come on, man. You got it. It's got to be helped out a little. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but everything else is so expensive. So the bands can't really tour. I mean, we just did this run for two and a half weeks. And I mean, we're spending $25,000 on hotel rooms and, you know, 15000 in gas. You know, it, it, it's just, okay. it, it's you insane. You go a grand a day just to rent one of those little bus buses. And you got insurance. And then you, know, you work again. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then the drivers and then rooms for the drivers. Before you know it, it's, you know, unless you're making big, big money. And even the big, big tours, they have big, big expenses. So it, it's, it's, it's very difficult to do. But. You know, there's always, no matter where in life, even 30 years ago, there were obstacles that you had to overcome to do it, you know. But uh, it, the good thing is about a lot of bands are weathering the storm and we're still out here doing it because we love playing and we love, I love creating new music. Yeah. I love the day the new album comes out and just seeing, you know, what people say about it. I love listening. To, I still listen to our album probably Oh gosh, it was like I was listening to it twice a day for about a year. I mean, I just I real I make records that I wish somebody else would make because I love them. I love the music. You know what I'm saying? So I can be a fan of my own band. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You should be. Everybody that writes music as a band, their band should be their favorite band. You know, so yeah, um, it, it's important. I think, and, and I, you know, and I, when I started the show with the same thing about fans going out and the cost and the merch. Because it mm-hmm. up and, and the, the cause people were talking about, I said, this, there's more to it. There's a bus, you're pulling it. You get the merch in the back of something, and it, you can just, that's taking more gas, just pulling the merch. Because people are complaining about the price of the shirts and how, why. I'm like, there's not big a profit. But that started me on my thing about the show. Now I'm close to 500 episodes. Yeah. So I, I see how important it is. And it's important for people to drive out and see the bands to go out on a work night. You know, I'm just going to be at times too, but like, I couldn't see you guys because you were. You know, almost like two and a half hours away. That's a lot for me to do. Right. I'll do an hour, half, I'll do an hour and a half drive out to see a band. I just did one. Two and a half hours on a work night, coming back afterwards. <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep. Oh, no. you... <laughs> but for the most part, some people just won't leave another town. I'm like, right. I'll do an hour, hour and a half to see a band. You know? so, and that's tough because we usually, in most cases, we're just given the schedule. Here's where you're going. <laughs> you know? Well, it's like an hour. <laughs> A three band bill. You know, there's a lot that has to be that fall in line for a tour to happen. You know, so speaking of which, we're going back out on the road in mid October with girls school in Alcatraz again, doing the West Coast. So nice. We will. It should be fun. Oh, we got yeah, along real well with those guys. Well, they're all good. They're, well, everyone's well seasoned musicians in a way that. Oh, yeah. You guys have all gone through the crap. And now you can just enjoy the music. You know, yeah. you, have, you have a supportive label, you have a supportive manager, slash singer, slash everything, you know. <laughs> Probably <laughs> cooking the meals in the background he's not singing or doing promotion, you know, see everything else. Who's what he's doing? He's a super talented guy. Um, yeah. That's that, that's how be on your stage, it'll be on I'm sure girls' school stage and, and I'll have to try stage. Um, the other thing is, besides that, and the new album you work on. So the new album you're saying is what, probably going to be next year? Yeah, probably beginning of 25. Yeah. All right. We work pretty, what? once we get into it, you mm-hmm. know, we're, we, 
we get in and get it done because once you get in that groove, you know, you like to, to kind of feed off of that momentum and stuff. And we're very disciplined when it comes to recording. Like when we go in, it's, we know what we're doing ahead of time. I mean, we're not in there just toying around. We do the homework ahead of time. And, um, uh, the, 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 the most time is just spent on, uh, kind of detailing stuff, just living with it. That's why we do like, we'll do one or two songs at a time and to completion. We don't do all drums and then all bass and then all guitars, et cetera, because everything is too homogenized and you spread your mind out across, uh, you, you can't focus in. We like to do one or two songs at a time. So everything is focused on that. That's all you think about. You live with that. Uh, you absorb it, you listen to it, you make your changes, and then you move on. And then when the whole album's done, you go back and kind of revisit everything all over. Sometimes you'll go back and the things that you had done at the very beginning, you go back and you've learned things during the course of recording the album that you want to go back and touch up or change. And well, that, first... that, that just feels dangerous then because then it feels like you're just going to be going. <laughs> well, you, know, you could be. Yes. You I could be. And that's why. Right well, that's a producer's job is, is for me to come in and say, you know what? Eh, it's done. That's it. Move on. We're going on, you know, because you could you can sit there and fine tune something till cows come home. You know, I mean, you'd be doing the, the same word for about three weeks <laughs> and then you go back to the actual first take, you know, yeah. so, well, that we should have just kept that one. So but, you know, we've been doing it a long time, so we're pretty focused and and know what we're looking for. And we have great engineer kent bruce i did the last record and mixed it he's going to be doing this again same studio same place it's um, kind of just, the sound. You, have, you have your sound and it sounds good you know that album's good what surprised me was um on the like if i listen to the streaming at the end uh -huh. is um i guess is it a bonus it's a live show show a little love oh yeah that. that's a live yep show a little it's, love it's a conversion yeah. but i was kind of surprised that it was on the end of it just because the continuity of how you put the song together. I can see where it'd be a bonus on a CD because obviously people love that song. So I'm right. able to look at, but I'm surprised to see it streaming to be part of the streaming list. Well, then again, there's one Not of those things that just we've talked about continuity, you and I, and I just kind of, yeah, that album is so, so well put together in, in concise. And it's a, it's, right. it's an, it's an act. It's one, it's a novel <laughs> from boom to boom. And then, um, they they wanted a bonus track they did it and those kind of things are beyond our control you know what i'm saying so but they just added the good, i do want to say it sounds good and it's not like they suck it in the middle because that would be unforgivable. right right oh it no that would that would so when i heard hard. it i had to go back and go, oh wait it, I, it didn't throw off the album because it's just like because if you listen to it i went back and listen I go, oh why is that attack on there because the album ended i knew it was in the album and then yeah. that's all came on. Sometimes iTunes like cycles through other like artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, like, oh, I go, that's where it's added on the end of that. I didn't, it didn't feel like it was. That's added like why it. this this great sixty five minutes of stuff goes from boom and it ends on this big crescendo, and then you go into a live track. Yeah, I know. It's like because it's just, they wanted a bonus okay. track. That's why you know it's it, like it does okay. sound good and it doesn't throw off the album yeah. itself. I mean, it's just weird, it's, huh? It's weird on the on the, the visual part, I, but it didn't. I just thought that I was going to a new music track is what I was doing, and then when I went back, right, I right, saw right. it. I said, "Oh, it's actually attached there." What a weird spot to it's put it instead of just the bonus it, track. Yeah, bonus track. No. <laughs> so to that point, to that point, um, it's great, and and, and it's, you have two boxes out, and people need to check everything out. It's fantastic. It's so much to dig into. It's like almost like over seven hours. I think of each one, maybe. Oh, that's yeah. it's a ton of stuff. Yeah, it's it really lot. is. I mean, it's gonna be like it's gonna be a long time to go through it and be like, oh my god, I, it's gonna be like next year. I'm like, Steve, I was listening to <laughs> just heard this. I just, you know what's so funny? Like, somebody, somebody, I don't remember what site it was, went through each of the box sets and wrote like two or three sentence um kind of a synopsis of every single song. What's Every demo. I mean, it was like it was like over a hundred songs, right? I mean, they. I mean, that's when you know they listen to it. <laughs> I mean, that was really you, cool. That is really cool. That's like dedication. You have a lot of support out there, and obviously, the whole thing is that's made you in the band is your guitar playing, your sound, your tone. 
And let's end on, on a high note here. We still have a high note. Let's end on your guitar course. You know, let's talk about it. It's on the website. The website is great, actually, since we've actually spoken. A lot of yeah, it's called The Blaze Method. And what I did was um, I, I always felt like, <laughs> because I used to teach a lot back mm -hmm. in, in, you know, years ago when I had time. Um, I had a lot of students. And I guess kind of felt like, you know what? after you teach um the lesson's gone except for what they can remember and what they wrote down because i always made them write everything down right but the lesson's gone and that you might have you know i might show you something but oh kind of forgot that you know wait how did you do that again or what I, so i wanted to do um a video lesson that everything was there that you would be able to go to forever you know you sign up you go to these lessons and, and start off not for somebody. I think some people that have never played guitar before know just a tiny bit can start off this, but it's kind of for somebody that plays a little bit of guitar, but doesn't understand how did scales work with this? Uh, what, you know, what's my, and not only just how to play different things and chords and scales and how they, but how they work together and how you don't get freaked out by the guitar deck. And it was just so big, I, I'm never going to do it. And I try to break it down. But in the lessons, they're video lessons. And I show them how to play some Lillian stuff. I actually take questions about music or business or songwriting, talk about songwriting. And they're like 45 minute long lessons. But in addition to the actual showing you guitar things on the guitar, I talk about um my experiences in songwriting and being in bands and what my recommendations on certain things are. Then I show them how to play certain parts of Lillian songs. So it's a little bit of everything, including some mental lessons. And um, it's called the blaze method. And uh, I made them really um, affordable. It's like you get four lessons for a hundred bucks, which is like 25 bucks a lesson. And, uh, but you have them forever. You know, and I've gotten up to eight deep on it so far. And um, so if people are interested, just go to LillianX.com and it expels everything out for you right there. And I still do the lyric sheets, too, as well. Um, you can any song that I've written, I write the lyrics for you on black cardstock in gold or silver pen. It's very nice looking and framed. And people send me pictures of them, how they've had them framed. Uh, some people have ordered like 10 songs. Wow. You know, they, they order the ones that, you know, for whatever reason, for to give to the oh, the day I met you, of course, nobody knows. Yeah. Those songs are always, uh, you know, the ones that they want to write and give it to their wife or girlfriend or husband or whatever. So I think it's uh, it was an idea I came up with because I thought it would be <laughs> something unique to actually have me write my own lyrics out. So it's more of a personal thing. Uh, you know, for a song that might mean something very deep to someone. So doing that, still doing the paranormal ghost hunting stuff too, as well. And just, uh, I'm keeping busy coaching my son show? in baseball. Just have a show announcement. Whatever happened to. No, to well, now we, man, it's been, it's crazy because we, for like 10 years now, it seems like we've been shopping our ghost hunting show. We have, I have a team of ghost hunters called the veil. <laughs> and we, we people have seen the other episodes that we've done. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but look, we got a whole documentary filmed, but it's we've been editing it for a year and a half, and we keep on getting these people coming in and say, hey, wait, before you do that, we're interested in your show, and we sit around and kind of wait for them to come back to us, and everybody moves like a turtle. Nobody moves quickly, and so I'm like, you know, now I'm telling Todd, look, just edit this thing and get it out. The documentary is great. It's fantastic, mm -hmm. and we're halfway finished with it. So we're pushing forward to get that. And then we'll find a home for the documentary on there. Um, it's called yeah. the ghosts of Fort Jackson. And um, it, you know, but I love ghost hunting and I, I still have my team. We do that too, as well. Coach, my son's a baseball player. He's 15 and I uh, just graduated eighth grade. And uh, so I'm coaching him in baseball. So it's like my whole secondary life is baseball coach and making my son, you know, He's really good. I'm just, I, I, I work and I work him out hard, man. So, um, just keeping really busy, brother, you know, 
Trying to I find time to squeeze everything in. You are out of control, but in a good way. <laughs> I'm glad we could catch up. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Same you know. here, man. All right, okay. So, uh, I want to thank you for the show, and we'll, we'll have a special thing when we come back. All right, man? Thank you. You got it, my friend. Always a pleasure, Sean. Thank you, buddy.